This video demonstrates the process of configuring SiteSync on a SiteFinity CMS website to promote content between two environments, source and destination. We'll start with a website which is running in one environment only and duplicate the website so we end up with the source and destination environments. If you have your SiteFinity website running on more than one environment already, you can skip this step, but you must make sure your database and configurations are the same among all environments before proceeding. This is our running SiteFinity CMS website in IIS. It will serve as the source environment. We'll start with backing up this database and restoring a copy of it, which will be used by the destination environment. This step is not directly related to SiteFinity, but we must go through it either ways. Now that we have taken care of the database, the next step is to duplicate the existing website and have it act as the destination environment. It's important to ensure both the database and website files and configurations match between the two environments. This is an essential prerequisite for SiteSync to work properly. We'll set up the copied website as a new site in IIS so we can have its URL signed. Of course, there will be some environment-specific configurations which may differ between the two environments. The connection string in a destination environment data config is a typical example. Let's go ahead and adjust that so it can point to the copied database. With this, we have completed setting up the two environments. The second part of this video demonstrates how to configure SiteSync on the two environments. We'll start with the destination environment first because we need to provide some specific details on the source environment later, like the dedicated SiteSync user credentials that we're going to create. By default, the SiteSync module is disabled, so the first step would be to go ahead and enable it from the Modules and Services page. Once the SiteSync module has been installed, we're going to go to its page for the first time. The module has not been configured yet, so we're going to proceed with its configuration. To do that, click on Synchronization Settings. On this screen, you must specify whether this environment will receive content from another environment or not. This will be our destination environment, so we need to enable this checkbox. Once the checkbox is enabled, SiteSync prompts us to enter a site key. This key is used to ensure no duplicate new content widths will occur between your environments. It is crucial to specify a unique site key for each environment and have them in incremental order. Now that we have specified the server will receive data and have added the site key, we can save the changes. The last step on the destination environment is to create a dedicated SiteSync user. This user must be reserved for use by the SiteSync module only. When you use SiteSync to promote content from the source environment to destination, the SiteSync web service needs to authenticate on the destination via this dedicated user. Create the user and assign it an administrator's role. Remember the credentials as you'll need to supply them when configuring the source environment. With this, you have completed setting of the destination environment for SiteSync. Now it's time to configure the source environment. Start by logging into the backend and installing the SiteSync module. This step is identical to what we did on the destination environment. Now that the module is installed, go to the SiteSync page to configure the module settings. Unlike what we did on the destination environment, here we're going to leave the allow content from other sites to be published to this site checkbox unchecked, as this is our source environment and it will only promote content. Click on the add a server button, which is where you'll specify where this environment is going to promote content to. Enter the details of your destination environment server. You can use either IP or URL. In the next two fields, add the credentials of the dedicated site sync user you created on the destination environment. Click on Save Changes. The last step is to verify whether we have successfully configured everything via performing a test connection. This is an operation where SiteSync verifies if it can successfully connect to the destination server. If test connection fails, review the displayed error or check the documentation for further troubleshooting information. Once you have verified test connection is successful, you have finalized setting up your website for SiteSync.